welcome back to the final lecture on the concept of supply and demand. What we are discussing in the previous three lectures is to understand the demand curve and the, and the supply curve and trying to understand what are the important implications of the law of supply and demand. And so far we have seen what are the factors responsible which are uh, which are uh, the factors responsible for changing the supply curve or the demand curve. So all these things we have seen in the previous three lectures. Today in this lecture we will try to understand how market equilibrium is automatically restored when there is there is a mismatch between the supply and the demand. So just to recall, we have seen that the point at which the supply and the demand, both these curves, they intersect, we call this point as a equilibrium point. And under ideal situation, under perfect competition types of market situation, the market should operate at this equilibrium point. The equilibrium point, we are having a supply curve, we are having a demand curve and these two are where the point at which these two are intersecting that is ideally the demand and the corresponding uh, the, and the corresponding point of intersection on the y axis reflects the price that at which any item or good that should be available in the market so this is what we call as equilibrium now there is a tendency of the market to shift any disequilibrium situation to this equilibrium point. Let us see how this equilibrium is restored when we have a disequilibrium kind of condition. So just to understand the concept, let us see on this figure what we are having. We are having a supply curve and a demand curve and the point of intersection is basically the equilibrium point. For that time being, let us say that on the demand curve, the point D denotes the actual demand which is there for any product corresponding to Q1 D. And the point B basically reflects or shows the supply quantities Q1 S. Now the difference between B and D is basically denoting that there is a mismatch between the demand and the supply. Now let us see what happens, how the equilibrium is restored because this is the disequilibrium. We are having a D, the demand is basically on the point, the demand is basically at D and the supply is basically the point P on the demand and the supply curve respectively. Now when we have this kind of equilibrium, how this will restore? Now, whenever there is a mismatch, now here the demand is higher and the quantity supplied, they are lower. So, based on the law of supply and demand, whenever we have less supply and higher demand, what will happen? The price will go up. So, the demand will move around the curve D, D and it will move up to the point P0. In this case, what will happen? The price will start rising. And the demand and, and the supplier, once the price start rising, the supplier will tend to supply more. So the settlement of the market will be again restored at the point P0 and the corresponding demand from Q1D will fall to Q0 and there will be a corresponding increase in the supply from Q1S to Q0. So automatically with whenever we are having a mismatch, that is the demand is on the higher side and the supply is not enough, the equilibrium point is restored, when it, restored by increasing the price. So demand, obviously when the price will increase, the demand will actually fall. So instead, rather initial demand was Q1D, but because of this increase in the prices, the demand settles down to Q0. Initially, the supplier supplies Q1S item but because of the rise in price the demand will again settle down to Q0. So this is how the equilibrium is restored. 
So any difference between supply and demand is what we call as market disequilibria and there is a tendency of the market to restore the equilibrium point either by increasing or decreasing the, the, the price and correspondingly the supply is either increased or decreased and the demand is either increased or decreased. So what this market disequilibria is always is always equal market equilibrium is always restored if we are having a case of market disequilibria. Now let us see a so few implications. Say for example if the supply curve remains the same and the demand increases. So the demand increases means that we have a new demand curve. Initially the supply curve is S and the demand curve is D. So the quantities the, at equilibrium point the price is P0 and the demand is and the demand and the supply they are at Q0. Now if the demand is increased so increase of demand is basically shown by the movement of the demand curve towards the right while the supply remains the same. If the demand is increased the supply remains low. The law of supply and demand simply states that in this situation what will happen the price will increase and this is quite obvious from this particular diagram. If we have an increase in demand the supply curve remains the same. What happens we are having a new intersection point and the price will increase from P0 to P1 and the corresponding when the price increase the, with this change the price increases from P0 to P1 and we have a new equilibrium point where the quantity where the equilibrium quantities they are they are they increase it they increase from Q0 to Q1. So this is the impact of the increase in the demand while keeping the supply curve fixed. Now another situation if the demand curve is same and the supply is being increased so obviously the law of supply and demand according to law of supply and demand the price will fall down. So now the equilibrium price initially what we have the demand curve remains same as T but the supply is increased from S to S dash. What will happen at the equilibrium point the price will reduce from P0 to P1 and the quantity the equilibrium quantities they get increased from Q0 to Q1 or simply we can say higher supply leads to lower equilibrium price and higher equilibrium quantity. Similarly decrease in the supply and demand. So if the supply curve remains the same and there is a decrease in the demand. So what will happen automatically the price will fall down. This is quite evident from the figure on the left that lower demand leads to lower prices and lower quantities exchange in the condition when the supply remains fixed. In another case if we have lower supply that is the supply curve changes from S to H dash or the curve moves towards the left what will happen lower supply leads to higher prices as evident from the for, from the figure on the right this will lead to higher prices and lower quantities exchanged. So if we just club all these together that is if we increase the supply that is the supply curve moves towards right and we decrease the demand curve or when the demand is decreased by shifting the demand curve from D to D dash what will happen as evident from the figure the, the quantities at the equilibrium, equilibrium point increases and the corresponding, corresponding price will get reduced. Similarly, when we have increase in supply that is the supply curve moves from left to right and the demand there is a corresponding decrease in the demand that is the demand curve is moving towards the left. What will happen at the equilibrium point the quantities demanded will be less and there will be a corresponding decrease in the price. So this is when the two curves they are changing together. Similar is the case here when we have increased supply and demand is increased of course the decrease increase in supply is higher than the increase in demand what will happen at the equilibrium point the quantities at the equilibrium point gets increased and the price will fall down. Similarly we have another situation where the demand increases and this increase is higher than the increase in the supply what will happen at the equilibrium point 
then the quantity supply increases and the price, corresponding price also get increased as evident from the two graphs. So this is the summary on one side we are having the supply if there is no change in the demand and supply P and Q remains the same. However, if there is no change in the demand and the supply increases, P will, P will lower down and Q will be moving up. Similarly, if there is no change in the demand and there is a decrease in supply, what will happen? P will go up and Q will come down. So this is how the equilibrium is maintained. If we have no change in demand and the supply is changed like increase and decrease. Similarly, if there is an increase in the demand with no change in supply, P will go up and Q will also go up. However, in another situation, we can't say that is the increase in the demand and increase in the supply. If we don't know the relative magnitudes, then we can't tell anything about the quantity speed. So we call this as ambiguous until unless we know that which magnitude is higher, either the increase in the supply magnitude is higher or increase in the demand magnitude is higher. But for Q, we can say that Q will move up. So this is the summary of how the equilibrium is restored if we are having any disequilibria in the market. Finally, this is all about how equilibrium is restored and another law which is important from economics point of view is law of diminishing returns. This law is quite evident in our day to day life. This law simply states that so uh, we can just have an analogy for this law that if we are having a glass filled with sugar a glass filled with water and we add certain sugar into it what will happen the taste of the water improves we add some more sugar the taste will further improve but if we keep on adding the sugar on the same quantity of water what will happen the sugar will no more get dissolved in the water rather it will be a waste so this is nothing but this is law of diminishing returns which simply states that in any production process adding one or more factors of production while holding the other factors as constant will lead to a point where the incremental returns are not in the positive direction or rather we are having the negative returns. Simply if we don't increase the number of machines and if we keep on increasing the labor what will happen initially the productivity will increase but once every labor is occupying every uh, every labor is occupying one machine then beyond in that if we increase the labor then this will reduce the productivity now there will be a congestion and there will be the restriction on the movement so rather if we want to increase the productivity or the output we must take all the factors in totality so that is what we mean by the law of diminishing returns with this i thank you all so these are the four lectures in which we try to explain the concept of supply, demand, the implications and finally in this we have seen that if we are having a market disequilibria, how the equilibrium is restored. Hope you have enjoyed all these four lectures. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.